Hello again, and welcome back to part two of our discussion around the neuroscience and power of community when releasing alcohol. If you listened to my first episode, thank you very much. And I just have a couple more things to discuss with you guys. I hope it's going to really get your, get your curious, curiosity peaked. It's time to take action. And you know that. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to empower you. So let's move forward. Let's talk about relapse. Return to use, as we call it here at AFL, a reset. It means going back to drinking. If you're listening to this, you are familiar with that miserable cycle. There were so many times that I was done. I was really, really done this time. And then I'd find myself doing it again. And it was worse. Somehow it always got worse. That caused me a lot of shame and guilt. And I beat the hell out of myself about it. Now I understand the science of addiction. I understand the progression of alcohol use disorder. And it makes total sense as to why it kept getting worse. Thankfully, it didn't get as far as it wanted to because alcohol use disorder, it can take us all the way down. So wherever you are today, I hope you can find some gratitude in the fact that it hasn't taken you there yet. It might feel like it sometimes, but you still have breath in your lungs. My drinking got to a place I never expected, and it could have been so much worse. And I'm grateful that it didn't, and sometimes I'm not sure how it didn't, you know? But I was a very busy mother, and I was able to keep it somewhat together. I wish I'd had Project 90. I wish it had been around then. And it's around today for you. So let's talk about that relapse thing. An article in the National Institute of Health estimates that individuals who attempt alcohol cessation on their own relapse at a rate of up to 80%. 80%. I felt like I was in that kid's game of shoots and ladders. Maybe you can relate. I'd feel like I was climbing the ladder. You know that ladder on the shoots and ladders game? And then I'd roll the dice wrong and I'd be on the shoot the one that takes you all the way back down. And I remember being a kid, and sometimes I'd have the stick-to-itness to start playing again and slowly climb up those ladders. Sometimes I'd throw a tantrum and give up. I was so discouraged. And that's how I felt when I'd find myself yet again drinking. Sometimes I'd want to give up. And thankfully, something inside of me knew that I couldn't. I couldn't afford to go out like that. I couldn't afford for that to be the memory my kids would have of me. So I got back up. And so far, I've stayed back up. Despite life getting lifey. And you can do it too. And so community is a buffer 
against relapse, reset, return to use. A few things happen. Number one, community helps us break the cycle of negative thinking. There's stages of relapse, you know, there's the prelapse, and that consists of the mental relapse and the emotional relapse. Those things happen before the physical relapse. And so during this journey, like I said, when emotions start to come up, things that we didn't think we would have to feel, or when holidays come up, or that party that you have to go to, or that business event where you're expected to order the nice bottle for the table and you're expected to drink it. You know, those things, they can be real tricky and the thinking that leads up to it can leave us so vulnerable that we might drink during those situations. But see, in our community, you get to talk about that stuff. Hey, I've got this convention coming up. I drink with these people like crazy. It's a, dr it's a drunk fest. What am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? And you've got your community. You've got people who are further along saying, I went through the same thing. And guess what? Nobody died just because I didn't drink. And I got more deals than I've ever gotten in, in any year I've attended because I was clear headed, lucid. I followed up. I remembered everything that happened. Also, because of alcohol's nature, it is a depressant. It amplifies our negative thinking. And so look at it this way. Your brain has come to depend on alcohol to feel good at all in the least. Your brain has stopped making enough dopamine to help you feel, allow you to feel real pleasure, contentment. And then you start to feel all these emotions and you're craving like crazy. It is a spiral, isn't it? And what are you doing? What are you doing walking alone all by yourself in that very dangerous neighborhood? Are you going to power through it? Is that sustainable? Has it been sustainable? If it were sustainable, you'd be doing it. You know, and so being able to talk about this stuff is going to help you reframe. It's going to help you look at things through a different lens. It's going to support you. It's going to, it's going to, you're going to be surrounded by people who are reminding you of your success. I don't know about you, but when I first stopped drinking, who I was surrounded by people who told me how much I'd screwed up and how they didn't believe it for real. And it's okay. I don't blame them for saying those things, but <laughs> it was tough. And when I was trying to do it on my own, it was enough to convince me that I may as well just get it over with and drink. And so aside from the emotional support, you get practical solutions. How do we deal with triggers? They're going to happen. Let's stop running away from them. Let's turn around and face them and put them in their place. What are some healthy coping, coping mechanisms? And yeah, th those things take practice, right? This whole oh, deep breathing and going for a walk to clear your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. <laughs> I just wanted to have a drink. But I was tired enough of the nonsense that I was willing to stick with it. And when I surrounded myself by women who were doing the same thing, it helped. We went through it together. And then we got to see each other win. We got to see each other go through those tough moments, those tough days, those evenings. And 
wake up the next day and say, I'm so glad I didn't drink. So what would that be like for you? Could be a relief. Finally, someone gets me. Someone's supporting me and cheering me on instead of shaking their head and going, yeah, right. Like you're going to stick to it. There's also a huge part when we talk about accountability partners. An accountability partner provides real-time feedback, someone you can lean on in moments of struggle. They're going to happen. You know, in AA, they do have a lot of meetings. I'm really glad they do. They have a lot of online meetings. And sometimes people don't pick up the phone. They might be busy. And it's not because they don't care. But let's face it, guys. When those cravings hit, they hit hard. And we need support then in that moment, like two moments ago. And so you're going to have a community in Marco Polo on the forum, which is another platform we use, where you can be in real time saying, I'm having a tough one. And someone's going to see it. A coach might see it. A member's going to see it. One of our admin team might see it and say, hey, let's reach out to this person. We're all invested in your success. And so what might that feel like? I know it seems weird, right? To be vulnerable and talk about those things. Except we know what happens when we don't, right? Like I said, dangerous neighborhood, our heads. Let's not wander around by ourselves. So that forms a connection. That offers support. You need it. You're human. We're built for it. We're built to support others and be supported by others. We're built for connection and community. And so what might that be like? There's also the component of peer, positive peer pressure. We talk a lot, don't we, about the, the, the negative peer pressure. And it's crazy, as strong and successful and smart as our members are, and I get it, when it comes to the peer pressure to have a drink, we all kind of just revert to like those scared kindergartners on the playground, right? Do people like me? Am I, do I fit in? So plot twist, in here you get the positive peer pressure, right? You get people showing you that it is cool, it is a badass thing to take on alcohol and win. It's really cool to learn how to regulate your emotions, how to learn to not have those outbursts all the time. And because we're all high achievers, we expect you to stay on track. This isn't, you know, some amateur hour. We're serious about this. And the people who are selected, who are invited into our program are serious. They're not here to play around. They're done playing games. They're done. They've tried so many things and they're finished. And so you're going to level up. Even if you don't feel like it all the time, you're going to level up because people are counting on you and you're counting on them. And so it taps into the human desire to meet social expectations, keeping you aligned with your goal. That's pretty amazing. That feels really good, right? We've all been part of that. You know, that class where, you know, the teacher is just different. They, they just expect you to do certain things a certain way. You know, we all knew the teachers, maybe the professors, where you were allowed to walk in a couple of minutes late. It's no big deal. And that kind of set the tone, didn't it? To not really take it seriously. Eh, I'll cut some, sh I'll take a few shortcuts on this assignment. 
just a little bit. They won't, they won't mind. They're laid back. What about those professors? <laughs> and boy, I had them. And they always seemed to be for the 8 a.m. classes, didn't they? That if you were even 20 seconds late, that door was locked. And you'd better not go press your face against the glass because then you were just going to get a scowl from the professor and a bunch of smirks from the, <laughs> from the students who were there on time. We've all had them. And so we weren't late to those classes, were we? Right. We rose to the occasion. That's how it is here. There's, there's no not showing up. You know, the coaches here, we continue our education. Stanford, Cambridge, Yale. We're taking courses to continue to grow because you guys deserve the best. You deserve the best coaches. And we're, we're sure showing up for that assignment. And we have expectations. And your fellow members have expectations. And you will rise to the event, to the occasion. Because that's what you do. You've done it throughout your life. So let's get you back to who you really are. Right? There's a lot to be said for that positive peer pressure. So in closing, you know, can I say that releasing alcohol is easy? No. Is it doable? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the science supports it. It supports community. It supports connection because we're made for it. Our methodology is proven to work. It's not just out us out here going, we've, we've got the magic. No, it is magic. It's crazy. The things that happen in here, the changes, the connections. <laughs> I've had I've said things on calls and a member will say, Coach V, how do you know that? It's like you're walking around in my head with me. And I'm like, I lived in that dangerous neighborhood, right? Can't play a player. <laughs> if I haven't done it, I've thought it or I've tried to. And I got sick of trying to get away with things. And so, yeah, I'm like-minded. I am like you. I was you. Different, but the same. Same kind of stuff running through my head. So there's nothing special about me. I did it. I mean, it's definitely special. But I'm a human with a brain just like you. And I know the tricks. And I know you're tired of getting away with it. I know you're ready to be accountable. I know. Because... That's how everyone feels when they come in. And that's how I felt when I finally got a community and I stuck to it. And I had professionals, professionals helping me. This is not a knock on AA or sponsors, not at all. I'm grateful for the time I spent there. It help, has helped members of my family achieve long-term sobriety. No knock on it. But there is something about having a pro. Hold me accountable. Help me understand why I was the way I was. And most importantly, what I could do about it. How I could come home to myself and be the real me. It's the most worthwhile time I've ever spent. And I think this could be for you. So again, if you didn't do it the first time, that part one of this series, go ahead and do it now. You have nothing to lose. Except hangovers, <laughs> nausea, headache, shame, embarrassment, stained shirts. Oh, I always stain my shirts because I was that red wine lady. 
Ah, oh, so many shirts wasted. <laughs> you won't lose your shirt. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. I hope I get to work with you. Until next time, take great care and have an awesome day.